Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Raid week continues, my friends. Yes, today we are back over here in the desert because I want to mess with the pillagers some. I think today's episode is where we're going to start laying the foundations for what is eventually going to be a little bit more of an automated raid farm. And today I don't want to necessarily go over the full raid farm design but I want to experiment with how raids spawn and do a little bit of experimentation with a kind of temporary setup. We're going to make this tower here our base of operations but we are going to take Bad Omen out into the ocean so that we can have better control over the spawning of raid mobs. Raid mobs, of course, are in different waves. They start off with just a handful of pillagers and eventually it becomes evokers, riding ravagers and witches and vindicators and all kinds of stuff. But I think by controlling the space in which they spawn, we can start to put together a very effective raid farm design. To be most effective, it would probably have to be around here simply because we need to have a never-ending supply of villager captains coming up to us in order to automate this. The problem, of course, being that there is a vast expanse of space around the outside of this tower, making it quite difficult to guarantee that the raid mobs are going to be able to spawn wherever we want them to. So my solution in the meantime, just so I can study exactly how these mobs spawn, is we're going to get Bad Omen, we're going to set up a platform out over the ocean with a villager so that it counts as a village, we'll have a workstation and a bed for them, and they will be kept in containment but safe so that I can figure out exactly what the best means of dealing with the pillagers that spawn there as part of the raid is going to be. Or rather, if not the best way, then at least an effective way. A way that we can exploit to our advantage in order to farm, raid, drops, emeralds, totems of undying, that kind of thing. It's going to involve tracking down a few of these guys here and then flying out to another location, which is not the ideal setup for one of these things, but I think this will get us a solid foundation of knowledge upon which we can build a proper raid farm. But before we go ahead and do that, I really want to show you something a little bit special because I had so much fun in yesterday's episode carrying out a pillager raid in the end that I thought I wanted to do that again. But instead of just show you the same style of footage where I'm mostly like standing on clifftops firing down at the pillagers, I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more cinematic, kind of in the same style as we did some of our last dragon fights all those episodes ago. So I went ahead and recorded another end raid using the replay mod, put together a neat little cinematic segment for you of another raid in the end, and I really hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to cut to that now, and when we come back, I'm going to start messing around with pillager spawning mechanics, and we're going to start laying the foundations for a raid farm later in this week. So here is the cinematic of a raid in the end, and I hope you guys enjoy.
Hey folks, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that little cinematic version of an end raid. And while you guys were watching that, I've set up a nether portal to and from the area that I've set up over in the ocean where we're going to be testing out how some of these raid mechanics can be manipulated. So I'm going to get this guy in the boat here. He's a librarian, but he doesn't have anything in particular that I'm trying to save in terms of trades. So we're going to just fence him in here so he doesn't get out. And hopefully the only place he'll be able to go is through the nether portal. Once he's on the other side, we're going to put him back in a boat and we're going to row him over into another nether portal that's going to hopefully take us directly to the area I want to keep this guy contained. So let's get him out of the boat. And yes, great. He's gone straight through into the nether. Perfect. I will fence this nether portal off so that none of the other villagers can get to it. Hopefully this should be enough. They don't really come over to this side of the village all that much. Having said that, there's a guy down here who we might have to let back in at some point. But uh, yeah, right now I just want to head back through to the nether. Let's go and find that guy on the opposite side and we'll be able to shuffle him over into the uh, the kind of containment area that we've got set up. Oh, it <laughs> looks like he's already headed off down the tunnel. Let's pop him in the boat here. Fantastic. And I've carved out a path to the other nether portal on the other side. Hopefully it shouldn't be too long of a row. There's about 200 blocks separating them in the nether, but it's more like 1,000 or 1,500 blocks in the overworld from the village, at least. It's a little bit closer to the, uh, the pillager watchtower. It should be you know, a relatively straightforward flight to get to and from there. And ideally what we want to do is set up the eventual raid farm we're going to be working on around the Pillager Watchtower itself. I just want to look into that a little bit more, get that right first time so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm kind of rowing blind here. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's make sure that I don't end up rowing myself into a lava lake with this villager. How about that? And if you thought rowing was slow on land, rowing is even slower over soul sand. And I have a feeling I might need to replace this soul sand over here with some regular blocks like, like netherrack. Because the soul sand has like a slightly lower height. It's actually like a fraction of a block shorter than a full block. And that could potentially mean that we couldn't get out the other side. There we go. Now we swap that out. Uh, the ghasts are firing at me, but hopefully we should be able to get down into this divot before it fireballs us again. Really don't want a gas taking out this villager. Yes, there we go. Okay, we're in the trench. <laughs> we're on our final approach. The nether portal is just there on the opposite side. And once we get this guy out of here, we sh we have a minecart track set up and we should hopefully be able to just get him in a minecart once we're on the other side of this portal. Gonna have a quick tentative look around just to make sure the ghasts haven't flown over. Nope, looks like we are in the clear. I'll set up a fence on this side again just to make sure that once we take him out of the boat, he's not gonna run away into the nether. Villagers tend to be a little bit unpredictable when they're in the nether, especially with all of the zombie pigmen around. So hopefully that should be enough. Let's step through to the other side, take him out of the boat and... He's through. Okay, now let's grab a minecart out of this shulker box I brought with me just to make sure that we've got one that we can put him in and let's step through to the other side. Let's switch off the nether portal using a bucket of water to make sure he's not going to run through again. Thankfully, we only displaced one of the minecart rails there. Once he's in, the minecart it should be simple enough to get him up into this glass box and that is where I want him to stay for the foreseeable future. I've got a couple of rails that we can place down here just to make sure that he makes it up into there and yep, that's connected. Connected. Perfect. All right. We want him to stay in this place and we're just going to box him in to make sure he is completely secure against any of the pillagers that might drop down here with the crossbows. The setup I have going on here is really very simple. It's just a platform on top of this glass case containing the villager. And ideally what's going to happen if I've got this right, if I have understood the spawning mechanics correctly, is that the pillagers for the raid are just going to spawn on this platform up here because there really isn't much area outside of here in which they can spawn. There are a couple of islands in the distance where potentially raiders could appear, but I think they're probably still going to appear fairly close to the center of the village. We could always either like remove the islands over here or alternatively, I could lower my render distance because if stuff isn't within render distance of the player, according to mechanics listed on the Minecraft wiki at least, it should not be possible for raiders to spawn outside of this radius. The idea behind raiders is that you see them coming. So considering there are no islands within 10 chunks, which is what I've got my render distance set to now, as opposed to my usual 16, they should only spawn on this platform here. We might have to make a couple of changes to where this villager is contained because I'm pretty sure for it to count as a village, we also need a bed and a workstation to be present. But I'll do a little bit of tidying up here, mainly because I don't want any of the pillagers to spawn over here on this nether portal. But in the end, we'll probably just be able to spawn proof this nether portal and uh, we could use it as an entrance to get to this area if we wanted to get quickly from the pillager watchtower over to this area. But I think this is 
going to be a fairly temporary setup. We shouldn't need it too much longer. So uh, I really just want to test out whether or not we can get the raiders to spawn on this platform. Now, of course, if they are spawning on this platform up here, we will need some kind of mechanism to flush them off the platform. So I'm going to work on that in a minute. But of course, we will need somewhere to flush them off onto. And it's going to work more or less like the iron farm that we set up back at my base, where we're going to have them on a 5x5 five five platform here. And they come off to either side. We have some fence gates lining one side, some fences lining the other. And hopefully we can use water streams to propel them off the edge of the platform and into some kind of catchment area down here where they will drift along into a single place where they can fall down. This is not going to take Ravagers into account, but Ravagers don't really provide loot that is worthwhile for us to get. You get a bit of experience from defeating one, but all you get in terms of loot is a saddle, and ultimately what you want to use this pillager kind of manipulation pillager farm for is not going to be saddles, it's going to be stuff like Totems of Undying and Emeralds. Now, Emeralds are only dropped from Evokers and Vindicators. Totems of Undying only drop from Evokers. The only thing pillagers really seem to drop, in my experience, is crossbows, and you might want to farm crossbows as well, but realistically, for my own experience, I don't really use crossbows all that much. I probably won't need them, so I'm not too worried about those. What we're going to do around here is just set up two more 5x5 five five platforms. We're going to have a single one-block hole for them to drop down in the middle here, so we're going to set up some water streams that flow directly into here. It might potentially just uh, lower this by one block to make sure that they all flow into a single spot and then we're going to put let's say like a lava block or something on either side to have the ravagers get caught in and potentially take lava damage and die that way because we just want to eliminate the ravagers entirely we want the waves of the raid to progress so any riders are probably going to get stuck in the lava block as well but ultimately ravagers are going to get caught up in lava up here and that's going to first of all prevent them from clogging up this hole to make sure that all of the other mobs can filter down into it but it's also going to make sure that the waves can progress through the rest of the raid. I'm going to make sure I light up this platform in the meantime though because otherwise we might get other hostile mobs spawning here which I really don't want while I'm working on this. So this has actually worked out super well. I've got these two 5x5 five five platforms here. I've left these connecting blocks in. So this entire thing is 11 blocks long by 5 blocks wide with a hole directly in the center here. We've got two fence gates above that and then four fence gates making sure this lava source block here is contained. I've just put a bucket of lava in there underneath the villager and I've got fire tick off so none of the fence gates are burning but I'm fairly certain you could also do this with signs or something like that as long as you had them connected to something. So when the pillagers spawn up here they should make their way off this platform and the thing I am counting on is the fact that we could potentially put water streams up there. I had a look at the footage from the replay mod segment that I recorded for this video and it seems like the pillagers will actually spawn above the blocks that they are going to be spawning on. They don't need a solid block on which to spawn uh, so that potentially means they work in the same way that iron golem spawns do where they can spawn in water and I'm really hoping that that is going to allow us to have these pillagers farmed kind of effectively. The one thing I am concerned about right now is ravagers with the size of them ending up landing on these fences around the outside. So we might need to widen the platform a little bit. But the idea is that they will make their way in here. Hopefully if they're not jumping up and down too much in the water then they'll just drop through the hole. If they do then they might catch a little bit of lava damage and that's where we could start to see some losses in the farm and we'll have to rework the design a little bit that way. But once they end up in the center here they should just fall straight through this hole and underneath that we're going to just build a fairly simple mob trap where we're going to have a single block through which we can attack them with a sword and hopefully get plenty of drops thanks to having looting on the sword. Let's see if this works. I'm kind of curious to see if I've got the mechanics figured out here at all or if I'm missing the mark slightly. The most important thing to do here is to make sure we have the water streams built correctly and this is exactly the same way as it is in the iron farm but I know the first time I did this with the iron farm I didn't explain it all that well so hopefully this will help if you're having problems with that as well. We want a row of water sources on this central block here and another row of water sources one block over. So if we make an infinite water source like this we should be able to have that go across the center and now it's flowing out to either side but it has this one strip of blocks in the middle which isn't actually flowing. By creating water sources on the next block over as well, like so, that should now have a set of water streams that flows in this direction, another set of water streams that flows in this direction with no visible space where 
the uh, mobs will end up just getting stuck. I can do it because I'm a player and I can be pretty precise about where I end up, but with iron golems they have such a large mass and with pillagers hopefully it will be the same thing where their pathfinding will take them into one water stream or the other, or in the case of stuff like ravagers they're clearly going to get caught up in one of the water streams, fall off here, go into the next set of water streams and that's going to carry them into the kill mechanism. But for that I'm going to have to get that built up from the sea floor. Kelp is actually a really great starting block for stuff like this, so you can uh, place blocks adjacent to kelp and it will help you build up from sea level as opposed to having to build everything up from the seabed itself. But from here we should just be able to place like a glass tube on the underside of here and have that just land them on a platform of sorts without the block in the middle there. And if we just bring that down a couple more blocks like so and then build something like that then we should be able to build a platform here that we can stand on as a player all the pillagers should end up funneling down into this space here where we can just attack them attack their feet with a sword hopefully the evokers and so forth shouldn't be able to spot us or we can kill them quickly enough that it won't make any difference of course one of the most important aspects of this is that we spawn proof anything in this area against raid mobs spawning on a flat surface so right now i'm using bottom half slabs to make sure that we do not get any raid mobs spawning on here they shouldn't be able to spawn on slabs especially if we make sure there are no full, uh, solid blocks underneath that and then we have of course have the uh, opportunity to crouch under there if we want to swipe at their feet a little bit and i think fingers crossed this should be everything we need to get set up i do still need to give the villager a bed and a workstation so i might head off and do that but it might be an interesting test to see if we can grab a bucket of milk on the way or something like that if we do need the villager workstation there or not or if just a villager would be enough so as we come into proximity of this little setup we have over here, nope, looks like we are not getting a raid quite yet. Okay, so I will place the bed and I'll place the composter that I've chosen as his guy, this guy's workstation just nearby. And hopefully with him being in the minecart, he should not be able to pathfind out into the bed. But the bed, I think, is a crucial part of this whole operation. So let's see if we can place that. And let's see if this now becomes an area that can take a raid. Maybe because he can't pathfind to the workstation, he can't claim it right now. So we might have to remove a block of glass here and replace it with a composter. That's not a problem. An easy alternative, of course, would be to put the bed underneath him, but I also don't want to create any kind of weird circumstances in which he can pathfind out onto another block. Nope, that has been enough. The raid is starting. Amazing stuff. Okay, let's take out any of the other blocks that we might have around here, and let's see which area the raid wave chooses to spawn. I might have to fly up and around this a little bit to see where we end up getting it because I don't hear any pillagers yet. So it looks like, yeah, our early attempts at spawning a wave here might not have worked out. And it seems like the raid boss bar has disappeared entirely, folks, which means that they just didn't find a valid place to spawn and the raid just isn't happening. Interesting stuff. So in that case, we might need to activate some kind of dispenser mechanism up here to you know, flush them off the platform when we can, rather than have a permanent water source up there. Well, that's not a big problem. We should be able to do that. In fact, it might even be possible to lure the mobs in towards the villager if they were trying to attack the villager in the central location by foregoing all of this water and stuff entirely. I might try that quickly before we try anything else. I sort of wonder if the pillagers will aim towards the village center, which is going to be this block here underneath the villager in order to try and attack him. We might give that a try instead because, yeah, it does seem like the water here is not the way to go. It does seem to be blocking the spawns. So it doesn't quite work the way I wanted it to, but oh well, that's what all of this testing is for in the first place. But we could always clear off this platform of water and make this platform funnel the villagers down into the center here if we wanted to. Let's head back and get Bad Omen one more time and try it this way without the platform above the villager there. There we go, the raid is started, and if we circle this area, hence the need for more fireworks, we should hopefully be able to see how the pillagers end up spawning and how they react. Now, are they spawning on this area? No, they aren't. So it looks like they are actually having trouble spawning this close to the villager. I gotta say, this is a little bit strange, because when I was working on this in a creative test world, it was possible for pillagers to spawn up here on a platform above the villager's cell. So I wonder maybe if they just can't spawn underneath the villager like this, or there's something else going on there that I'm not quite understanding. So let me try replacing the water on this platform, leaving the top platform open, and we'll see if it works that way. 
One more pillager captain here on the outskirts of the outpost. There we go, we've taken him out. Let's head back to the farm and try this one more time. Okay, coming into range now. Hopefully the raid bar should pop up. There we go. And now let's see if we can get some raiders spawning in this time because... Like I said, when I did this in a creative test world, they did seem to be able to spawn on that topmost platform. I didn't really do anything with them after that, but let's see if the raid bar disappears. No, we actually have something this time. I can hear them. Fantastic. All right, let's see if we can spot them. Okay, a couple of them have ended up coming off the platform. They are going down that tube in the center. Oh, fantastic. Hello, fellas. Hey, it's actually working. And there was a Vindicator in there, so we got a couple of emeralds as well. Two emeralds with looting. That is wave one over. All right, this is working a lot better than I was hoping. I don't know what it is that caused them to not spawn on this platform, but they were spawning on the platform above. That is fascinating, but hopefully it means they will continue to behave as they have. They seem to walk off the platform by themselves just trying to get to the villager. And then, okay, they are resisting a little bit when it comes to this water flow here, but hopefully in time they should start to trickle down into this little kill chamber we have down here. That's excellent. And yeah, we do need some way of getting them off that top platform, whether that's a dispenser and water streams or something else. I mean, potentially we could have a single water stream in the center, and yep, it seems like a couple of them are taking damage in the lava, as I was predicting. But hopefully, yeah, with a couple of swift attacks there, we got ourselves 10 emeralds now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is great. This is an emerald farm unlike any that we have tried in the series so far. I wonder if maybe a single water stream in the middle of the platform would be enough to drive them off here. And that, that, well, that guy there seems to have just caught wind of where I was and decided to make his way down there. But yeah, if we have, say, like a plus-shaped water stream in here something like that maybe uh oh no that's gonna flood the entire platform isn't it because it's kind of broken off here at the sides oh right what can we do about this there are a few different options here i'm excited to explore those but for now i just i'm really happy that this is working in the first place and that we can get wave after wave of raiders uh through this system now let's see what happens if we spawn in a wave that has a ravager because i'm excited to see if this fence is going to contain them and if the lava trap is going to work oh Turns out not so much. I think that one actually just flew off the side of the spawning platform. So we might need to make the fences there a little bit higher if I'm any judge. Yeah, we also have a Vindicator who ended up down there as well. So when they spawn, they seem to spawn in a pack and then collision makes them fly out in all different directions. Oh, we have a witch in there now as well. Okay, let's take out these guys while we can then. I'm a little bit worried about what happens when evokers start to turn up. But anyway, for now, we should be able to take these guys out from the air. Obviously, they don't pose any threat to the village or the raid would already have ended. Is that Ravager going after some dolphins or is it just walking in a random direction? And the problem I think we have right now is that a couple of Vindicators are just up here. Yeah, no, the couple of Pillagers were just up there on the platform. I think they have now come down because they saw me flying up into the air. So maybe we kind of need to use the player as bait a little bit as well. Or maybe a second Villager could lure them off the platform in the first place. But then that might affect the radius in which it tries to spawn the Pillagers. But as far as it goes with that platform up there, they do seem to be spawning up there pretty regularly. Let's see if any more of them fall out to the sides. I didn't hear any fall. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, looks like a few of them are taking damage. We got some witches, which will presumably drink some fire resistance potions and, of course, start to heal up their raid mates. But that's fine. We can take care of them nice and easily. Look at the loot we're getting here, though. This is so cool. We still have a few pillagers, it seems like, up here. So let's quickly do a quick round. And, yeah, we have a couple of them up there as well. Let's see if we can... Yep, uh, my presence just seems to be luring them off the platform, which is great. That is very good to know. We can take them out nice and quickly. And we have one raider remaining. Did one of them actually fall into the water? Oh, yes, a witch is down there. Okay, we'll take care of the witch then. We should be able to snipe her from a distance with the bow nice and easily. I'm amazed that this is working out as well as it is, though, considering I haven't really tried much of this out before. There we go. And now wave number five, I think we're on at this point. This is potentially where it gets a little tricky. Okay, once again, waiting to see if anything spawns and falls over the edge. I think we're okay. Uh, I imagine a, a pillager riding a ravager just got trapped up there in the lava. But these guys, we should just be able to... Oh, yeah, no, we get vexes. We do get vexes, unfortunately. Oh, well, we should be able to deal with them while we're stood here on the planet platform nice and easy this is kind of the problem with the evokers though is that we need to get them into the kill chamber as fast as possible otherwise they will spawn in some backup and we don't want that to happen because as aforementioned in this series i really dislike vexes i find them very very irritating to deal with 
It's okay when they come at you one at a time on this platform, though, so hopefully we'll be able to do something about that. And I really think it's just a case of the Evokers staying up here on this platform and not having a means to fall off, so... We should be able to take out the Pillager who's up there riding the Ravager, and then we really need some kind of means to get them off that top platform. That's the number one priority with this setup now. There we go, used a Punch Bow to get the Ravager off the platform, and it ended up in the ocean here, and we're good. Okay, last wave of the raid, or at least this should be the last wave according to my calculations. We are on hard mode though, so we might expect another two waves. Let's hope we don't get too many evokers coming through with that, but of course we get the Totem of Undying as part of the loot now, which is perfect. We have 32 emeralds now, half a stack of emeralds for not much work at all. I like this. I'm pretty happy with this. I really wish that evoker would actually get into the kill shoot though. There we go. We got him. We got another Totem of Undying as well. Amazing stuff. I think we're getting a ton of iron axes that I don't really want as well, so let's throw those out real quick. I expect there will be a couple of other Ravager riders here and there. Uh, looks like we have a witch in the water as well and two pillagers who haven't quite made their way down into the system yet. So all in all this is working out pretty well so far. Obviously the delivery mechanism needs a little bit of work but I think we are onto a winner at this point. This should be the last wave and yep stuff is falling down into the tube already. Manipulating raid mechanics is perfectly possible it seems like pillagers with the vokers included do not have a great deal of speed in water and that makes them way easier to deal with than they are on land because the evokers sprint around so so much when they're on land so uh in water hopefully we should be able to deal with them a lot easier and that's one of the advantages of building this out here in the ocean we need to take care of this last evoker who's up here on top of the ravager we'll push the ravagers off and hopefully he should end up in the lava yep there we go he might summon a couple of vexes before he makes his way into the lava but it seems like the lava is burning up the ravagers nice and easily which is absolutely what we wanted yep there we go we might even get a couple of the remaining raiders to drop down here if they dismounted the ravagers as soon as they started taking damage there we go that's our last evoker we got him oh man the vexes came right before we managed to take him out but that's fine i can take on a couple of vexes like i said if they are just coming at me one-on-one -on, -one on this platform they do still pack a punch if you aren't wearing full diamond armor though but with this last whoa okay we actually got in here with the vindicator wow wow i'm glad that i managed to take him out before he attacked me i can't believe i ended up going through that one by one space oh that could not have happened any any more accidentally but man that was good that was good we have a victory condition if we had a bunch of villagers around here we'd be able to get tons of hero of the village loot from them we got ourselves a few extra totems of undying 38 emeralds total i think this is pretty good as far as farm designs go. But now the real test begins, because in order to have an almost unlimited supply of bad omen and make this a fully automated farm, we're going to have to build this setup above a pillager watchtower area. And we need to potentially set up some sort of system whereby the pillager captains can be funneled into an area where we can kill them easily to renew the bad omen effect over and over again. Instead of having to fly to and from the watchtower to get bad omen and come back, we are really going to have to put in a lot of work. So I think we are probably going to post that until a little bit later in the week we'll do that maybe thursday or friday because i have a little bit of stuff i want to do in wednesday's episode but for now at least we have tested and confirmed that this is a potential raid farm design we do need to expand the platform a little bit to stop stuff from dropping off into the water but i am really happy with that a loot collecting mechanism would be super cool as well obviously there's a ton of different loot you can get from each of these mobs witches especially are of course a source of like seven or eight different loot drops so that's going to be something to manage as well but i think this has been a resounding test success i'm really really excited about this design and i hope you guys will find some use for it in your world we're going to be tackling a full pillager farm design later on this week so i hope you guys will look forward to that in the meantime thank you so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now